everybody, welcome to another episode of Home Recording Essentials with me, Sean Matsukawa. Hope everybody's doing well during this crazy time. Um, we're in like week three or four of this lockdown period of the coronavirus. I just hope everybody's holding their head high and still making, you know, great music and finding things to do. And even if you're not making music, you know, I hope you're doing well. With that being said, today we're going to talk about recording templates. Um, I've had a couple of people request this episode in particular and ask me to explore this topic a little bit more and I guess we'll just jump right into it. All right, so to build our template, we've got a few things to look at, right? Of course, we got to give it a name. We call this Sean's Fox template. Can't put apostrophe S because formatting. Um, file type, wave, AIFF. I'm gonna do wave. Um, it's pretty standard across the board. AIFF is like max wave file format. Um, everybody pretty much uses wave still, so stick with that. Sample rate. Um, I typically stay at 48K. Uh, the reason is because that's the standard for video and 44.1 is the standard for like music when you're streaming, you know, buy songs of iTunes, CDs. CDs contain files that are at 44.1K and at 16-bit. Um, it's just kind of like resolution. The higher you go, the higher quality you get, the higher resolution you get. Um, but the file sizes are bigger, requires more processing. Um, and for me, I like to stay at 48. Some people like to do 44, um, but I feel like for me, it's always better to downsize from higher quality than try to upsize from lower quality, right? It's, try, it's like trying to take, it's like pixels to a camera. It's like trying to uh, stretch photos that are low res versus uh, uh, downsizing photos that are high res. You know, the quality is different. All right, so cool bit depth, similar concept. This has to do with headroom. Um, I like 32-bit float, um, 24 is solid. Uh, 16 is a little bit too low for me, but again, for me, it's always better to, well, ultimately we're gonna end up in 16-bit when we export the song in its, in its final form. But ultimate, again, same concept, like the downsize from high res and upsize from low res, okay? IO settings, we can leave that alone. Interleave, this has to do with stereo files. Um, if we leave this checked off, it'll keep stereo files as one file rather than two. If we leave this unchecked, it's gonna make it two mono files in our audio files folder. Don't really want that um, out of convenience. Keep them interleaved, hit prompt for location. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save my file. And I'm gonna save it for my, on my desktop for now. Um, I was working on this earlier. <laughs> I just call this number two. All right, cool. So we got a blank session, right? So we're gonna go over track types. There's three different track types we're gonna focus on today. They're gonna be aux tracks, audio tracks, and master faders, right? So we create one of each and briefly go over them. So audio tracks are standard audio tracks. You know, if um, I wanna record something onto it, I hit input arm and record arm. I can record something right now and it's recording, you can see, you know, play, play it back. back, record something right now, and it's recording, you can see, cool, all good to go. So similar to any standard audio track in any DAW. Um, aux track, uh, these are different because you can't record onto these tracks. They're pretty much passive tracks, meaning that any audio you send into it gets outputted into it. and. It has inserts, just like a regular audio track does, it has sends. You can solo, you can mute. These tracks are typically used for uh, subgrouping tracks. So when you want to group a bunch of tracks together, you know, if you have like five different tracks um, and you want to group all of these together, you can do that via a bus. And you make the input of this track the same bus. Um, I'll go over that right now, actually. Um, well, yeah, so. For me, in my templates, in my vocal recording templates, I like to subgroup frequently, right? Um, just gives me more flexibility and also it's just more efficient when processing. So when, what I mean when I say that is I can compress audio and EQ everything through this aux track rather than have six different plugins on each audio track, right? Kind of keeps me from having latency and also keeps me from, you know, overloading and have my Mac on, uh, the fans on 10 
and you know, like, it'd just be a disaster. So, we call this record LV, call this the vocal one, two, three, four. I like using the record method, and what that means is I'll record all my audio from this for these set of tracks onto this track, and then I copy and paste them, the takes that I like onto these different tracks, right? So I'm gonna color coordinate these yellow. I like to make my the vocal tracks yellow. That's just my system. You know, you can create whatever you want with your system. I like making re my record tracks red. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to output all these tracks via a bus, actually this one too. And I'm going to make the input of this aux track bus three and four. So what do buses do? Well, they're the middleman. They're kind of, they take, they gotta think of it the same way as you think of the form of transportation. They take you from point A to point B, right? So what is the bus doing in this case? It's taking all the audio from here, from point A, which is these tracks, to point B, which is this aux track, right? So that's really handy. Um, and I'm gonna call this LV subgroup. All right, so that's where all my lead vocal tracks end up going. Um, so in that case, I can put a compressor on here and I can compress all my vocals at the same time with this. I can have volume control over all my vocals in the subgroup through here, you know. Let me record something real quick just so you can see how it's processing. Check, 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 one, two, three. All right, Let's say that, let me do that. Check, 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 check. One, one, two, three. three. Cool. Copy that, All right? So I have two different, you know, like takes, well, layers here, right? Let's pretend these are like harmonies, right? Um, check, 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 one, two, three. And I want to compress them. Check, 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 one, two, three. I can do that. Let's say I want to turn them down. Check, 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 check. one, two, three. I can do that, you know? Um, I can do whatever I want with them. So that's the, that's, the use of subgrouping things, you know, it kind of gives you more capability, it's efficient, uh, it gives you more flexibility, it's efficient, uh, and I can, you know, set up different things on here. I can EQ it, I can set up distortion, whatever I want, you know. Um, I wouldn't recommend distortion on templates, typically, unless you keep them inactive because they just require a lot of processing power, but you know, you get the idea. All right, so reverb, we can do something similar, we can use it we can use buses, but via sends and not outputs, right? Um, ultimately, everything has to go to one and two, output one, one and two, right? So I'm gonna set up my master fader to be output one and two. So if I hit play, you're gonna see the audio is going to go from here, into here, and then out into here, right? One and two. Check, 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 check. one, two, three. So our master tracks are kind of our final destination. You know, we can put our limiter plugins on there, but we are ready to bounce and we wanna make this it sound loud, so I can I can slap like a limiter plug-in right here. And of course, because the latency is so high, you know, with limiters, I can keep it inactive rather than bypass. Because when I bypass a plug-in, the plug-in is still technically on, but audio is not going through it. Well, if my plug-in is still on, it's still gonna create latency. So if I make it inactive, which you can do, command, control, clicking, you know, audio won't go through and it's not on but I can bring it back up with command control click again, and it's right back to where I have it, right? So, perfect, right? Um, check, 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 one, two, three. Cool, so I have my tracks outputting to this bus, and this bus going into this aux input, right? So I wanna set up my reverb. I have bus five and six. Let me set up an aux input. And here I have a reverb. I'm gonna set the input of this aux track to bus five and six, and I'm gonna send my reverb. So the minute I turn up this fader, which is my send fader, you know, uh, just my send, right? It's going to hit this bus, bus five and six, sending audio, a copy of the audio on here to this bus, and then this bus is going to hit this aux track, which has reverb 100% wet on, right? The mix knob is all the way up. Check, 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 check. One, two, three. Cool, you see it, right? I can label this reverb, and I'm gonna make color my color code my subgroups, right? So now, um, important thing to note is 
you should solo safe your aux tracks. You know, it's uh, in, in Logic and in Ableton, if you solo audio, you know, on a regular track and it's outputting to a subgroup or into an aux track, they typically, typically you can hear your audio back perfectly fine. In this case, if I hit play with this track solo, I don't hear anything. And the reason for that is, is because Pro Tools doesn't solo safe anything for you. You know, Pro Tools doesn't do a lot of things for you. You kind of have to do things on your own. It's a lot more manual than other DAWs are. So to hear this back, you'd have to solo these two tracks as well. Check, 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 one, two, three. Right, and if I want to hear that one. Check, 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 check. one, two, three. Um, but let's say I don't want to do that all the time. It's a pain in the ass, right? I just want to be able to solo and hear it immediately. Well, that's very common, right? So I can command click or solo safe, you know, these tracks. So anytime I hit solo now, check, 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 one, two, three. It's soloed, right? Super handy, right? So you might be wondering, why did you put your reverb on an entirely different track rather than just throw it on here and use like the, uh, the mix knob and kind of turned it you know, down, check, check, check. One, two, three. you know, turned it up. Well, I could do that, you know, if I really wanted to, I could do that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is I want a little bit more capability. So I want to like, I want more flexibility, right? So I can EQ my reverb from here, right? Which is a very common thing to do. Um, check, 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 one, two, three. Check, 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 one, two, three. Right? Check, 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 one, two, three. I can shape the texture of my reverb. I can compress it. I can, you know, do whatever I want with my reverb. I can even send it again or output it somewhere else if I really wanted to, right? Um, that's the beauty of using buses, you know? With sends, you can send stuff in parallel, which means you're sending a copy of a signal to it while it's still outputting to one and two, right? Ultimately, where we want to end up, where everything ends up. Um, or I can output something completely into it and subgroup things. I can process things in many different ways. It's just all about flexibility, right? You know, the order you put your plugins in is important too because they're gonna sound different depending on what you have it. You know, audio, you gotta think of it as a physical thing and it has to go through, you know, several things in order, you know? So the order of your inserts is very important. It doesn't go through all the plugins at the same time. It has to go from one place to another, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, okay, cool. So you might have, you might also be wondering why I have a record uh, track. Well, I kind of briefly touched on that, and you might have seen me earlier kind of make the files disappear after I copy them down here. I don't know if you guys caught that, but basically, what I did is I saved my takes as playlists, right? And Pro Tools, that's one of like the most well-known features. I didn't delete any of my takes. I save all my takes pretty much always. You know, very rarely do I delete anything. Um, even if the artist tells me to, I say the takes just in case, right? So, um, very handy feature is playlisting. You can access your playlist by command uh, control and hitting left on the on the left and right on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the arrows, right? So. This lets me keep my takes, and let's say I want to create a, a comp of my takes, right? So I can do that, I can take do that, and you know I can have two pieces of check, two check, takes, check. right? Check, check, check. And I can bring that down, copy it over here, and save this, right? Very handy mechanism in Pro Tools, and it's fit, it's used in many many sessions. So. I'm gonna delete these because I don't want these saved onto my template. Now, I want, my, I want to have my playlist starting in order, right? So the way I have to do that is I just make a new playlist for each of these, which I can do, or I can duplicate playlists. So I can command, option, control, shift, and backslash, you know, as the quick key. Um, this allows me to have all my tracks start at 0.01. So it'll leave everything really organized and it'll start at one instead of technically like zero, where it just has a name like this, you know? Um, it's, it just keeps things more organized. You know, I can, this would be like my first comp or something, or this would be my second comp. And I can playlist these two if I want to, you know? But I like to keep all my takes here and all the takes I keep, I put on these tracks, right? So I can do that with 
a background vocal, you know, subgroup too. I can create another one of these sets using different buses, right? I can, you know, make four background vocal tracks. I can do like one. You can do one, two, three, right? Label this red again. And a quicker way to do this, to set up the bus and the aux input at the same time, like it does in other DAWs, is you can hold Option Shift to hit to mess with all the selected tracks. Hit new track, and I can go BGV subgroup, right? So boom, I have not only my aux input track, but it created the bus for me, and it labeled it. And you can do this with this too. I can name this LV bus, right? And all my buses are labeled properly. And I can even label this reverb bus. So boom, it just makes things a little bit more organized and I can see things, right? A little bit clearer. And um, yeah, it's very handy to use. And look, now I have, look, I have two sets of tracks. Maybe I want similar settings on this background vocal subgroup. And I can just lower the volume because they're background vocals. And I can put my reverb via SN through here too. You know, super handy, right? Super practical. All right, now let's say I have my session, I have my template set up. I'm create a new session, fake session. I think I have another one, so I'm gonna make it two. Save it on my desktop. And yes, I want to save my template. Well, I can import my template into this new session through here, right? And I'm going to hit Command-A or Option-Click to get all my tracks from my template. Um, using import session data, sorry. Uh, you can access this via File, Import, Session Data, or Option-Shift-I. <laughs> and uh, find my session, of course and then hit Command A. And I'm gonna hit Do Not Import because I don't wanna import clips and media because I don't want the actual clips, I just want the tracks. And you can click off these if you want, you know, depending on what you want, if you wanna keep the colors or not, the comments, whatever. Hit okay, boom, I have my template. I'm ready to go. Okay, so now let's move on to live. This, we're gonna create five tracks. Again, audio input. Um, and I can do record LV if I want to. I can just do LV one, two, and three. Saving takes in Logic is a little bit different. Um, you can access like a playlist-esque uh, setting, which I've set up on my computer. Um, I don't remember the exact term for it in this DAW, but I use it and I set up the quick keys to be the same as in Pro Tools. So I can save my takes this way. Um, and I can output all these tracks to a bus, like I did in my other template. Um, all these tracks are mono. You can tell by the one circle. They're all input one, which is where my mic is. You can already see it uh, metering on each channel I get on. You know, the mic's right here. So I can call this LV bus, or LV uh, subgroup, sorry. And if you noticed, Logic already made the aux input track for me, you know, as I was explaining earlier, right? Pro Tools doesn't really do that. You kind of have to access it a different way. So it created a stereo bus for me. You can tell by the two overlapping circles. Um, and it also created uh, the uh, stereo out and the stereo, the master track and the master bus for me. So Logic has two. I believe the gain staging, the way it works is it all the audio ends up here and then it hits this last fader. So, you know, similar concept. I can put plugins on here. I can use, you know, the regular channel EQ, use a compressor, do whatever I want, right? And compress through here, set my template up, and I can use Sense to set up my reverb. So it's the same thing. Um, it's not gonna say bus one and two. Uh, it's just gonna say bus one, bus two, bus three, bus four. It's, they can be stereo or mono buses, you know, the way you can configure them through here. But since we're using reverb, I like to use reverb 
uh, in stereo typically. So I can have my reverb 100% wet here and send my track information from here into this reverb, right? It's a weird reverb actually. Let me stretch it out so you can kind of hear it a little bit better. So here it is. Cool, right? So you can set that up however you want, you know? Um, same concepts, right? As far as routing goes, you know, I can put plugins on here, I can do whatever I want, um, but they're all output here. I can control the volume through here uh, for the, well, I can control the volume through here for the all my lead vocal tracks. You know, I can send the reverb through here, and compress them all through here. You know, I can do whatever I want, really. And I can do the same thing with the background vocal tracks. Now, the one thing I do notice about Logic is that when you create an aux input track, you know, via a bus, it doesn't create that track for you in this view. So in order to access that in this view, you have to hit create track. Boom, you got it, right? This is cool because if you want to automate this or mess with it in any other way, you can do that very easily. Um, very handy, you know? So, uh, yeah. Uh, so as far as mastering, master tricks, right? Well, let's talk about a little bit of some of the differences, right? So bus, buses. I can't rename my buses in Logic, not to my knowledge at least. Um, that's not that big of a deal to me, but you know, if it is to you, Maybe you can look into it because I personally don't know the way to change my bus buses in Logic, and I've used Logic for a long ass time. Um, and okay, so for stereo buses, right? There's also no uh, make inactive setting, of course, to my knowledge. Again, uh, when it comes to Logic, there's only a bypass. You know, you can only you know uh, command click or hit this power button. You know. So, as far as setting up your stereo bus and what you wanted to put limiters on there, you can't have them on there without having latency be an issue, right? Like if I were to put this on there right now and try to record or even just so you could hear, hear my, my voice, voice you, you can, can tell, tell the latency is atrocious, right? But when I take it off, it's fine, right? It's better, right? I have quick time rolling right now, so it's not going to be perfect. But, um, you know, uh, the benefit, I will say the edge that Logic does have over Pro Tools is that you can save channel strips. That to me is a feature that I believe Pro Tools should have picked up on way earlier. So my workaround as far as not being able to keep my plugins inactive in, you know, in Logic is I can set all these things up. You know, I can have different, you know, I can set up my whole mastering chain or whatever, right? And it's like, let's say I got it real nice right now and I like it. So I can save that channel strip setting as fake master two, since I already have one in there. And I can reset the channel so I don't have it on there, but when it's time to balance my song and export, I can just find it and use it. Simple, right? And that works with any track. That works with the buses. You know, I have different uh, presets for them, and I also have, um, you know, I can do that with regular audio tracks, and I can reset them, I can pop them up, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can copy them over uh, from one track to another, you know. Very useful. So, let's say I have my template all set up, right? I know I, we didn't do the background checks, background uh, <laughs> tracks and everything, but you know, you get the concept, right? So. I can save as, or I can hit save as template. Now, I'll go over save as template. This is cool. Um, Sean's Fox template test, right? I can save it as that. And it'll save on my computer and I can access it when I create new template or I can also save this file onto my desktop, Sean's Logic Vox template, right? I can save it as a package, you know, I can say, or as a folder, but I'm gonna just save it as a package for now because there's no audio files or anything in it. And I can create a new session, right? 
Now I can create a new session like this and do what I did in Logic. Yeah, I mean, do, do what I did in Pro Tools, where I can import the session data. Now it's not called import session data, it's called import logic project, which is not a big deal. Do that. I can access my template. Boom. And I have all my tracks here, and let's, I wanna take all these tracks, you know, import them, input outputs, either the sends, automation, I just gotta check off whatever I want. The import project settings, I can import like the key and BPM and all that if I want, really wanted to. Add, um, I can add all my auxes, and I'm good to go. I have my same template. Now I created another master track for me, which I don't need, so I'll get rid of one of them. And I'm good, right? Now I can do that, or I can also just do uh, new from template. And here's uh, Sean's vocal template text. Sweet, right? Super easy, right? I got it in seconds, you know? Um, I prefer to do the import session data uh, techniques, you know, because I can do something similar in Pro Tools as well as far as saving my templates, but uh, because it gives me the flexibility of taking my templates and bringing them with me, like I can keep that in my email or on some USB, uh, on, on some thumb drive, and take it to sessions and use it, you know, pretty easily, rather than have my template only exist on my computer, you know. It's a lot easier that way, and it's a lot more flexible, a lot more portable that way. So, that's it. These are just all different capabilities, you know. You just gotta figure out what's more useful for you and you can use this for guitars you can use this for vocals you can use this for bass you can use this for anything you can these are just ways to take your audio and move them around the session and just have them at your disposal um, so yeah I think that concludes our video let me know what you think I'll be back next week with another episode let me know what you like to see uh, feel free to subscribe hit the notification bell you know if this is your thing and you love watching this content, you know, why not? Also, if you like any of the beats that you've heard in this video, you can purchase those at tracktrain.com slash Sean Santana. Those are all beats produced by me and they're available for use. They're available for lease. Um, I, got, I got standard leases, I got unlimited leases, and I got exclusives available. So yep, thanks for watching. See you next time.